Hi everyone, this is Miss Tom with checkpoint number seven. We're gonna be talking about fraction busters and solving equations. So first of all, uh, there's a couple of things that I wanna mention about this lesson. It is gonna be slightly tough, so make sure you pause the video if you're not feeling like you understand something. And also, all the problems that I'm doing on the left-hand side mirror or are exactly the same setup as the ones on the right-hand side. So you're working on the right-hand side as I'm doing the left-hand side, okay? So first of all, you got an equation, so we're gonna slice it. The other thing is that you're gonna notice that we have denominators. Now, denominators are fractions, which make it a little bit more challenging to solve. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna multiply both by six and three, okay? The reason why we're doing that is because you wanna make it so that the denominators go away. And how do you do that? By eliminating them with the fraction busters. Now these fraction busters are really helpful because you can eliminate them and then you have whole numbers. So the sixes are gonna cancel out here and then we're gonna end up with three X plus. Over here, the threes are gonna cancel out and then go two times six, that's 12. Equal to five times three times six. Well, five times three is gonna be 15 and 15 times six is gonna be 90. If you're not convinced of that, always check your work. See? Okay, then the next thing is we're gonna continue solving for x, so we're going to need to subtract the 12. What we do to one side, we do to the other. Then this becomes a zero pair. We end up with three x is equal to 78. And then lastly, we're gonna go ahead and divide by that three, and we get x is equal to, what's 78 divided by 3? If I were to do that in my head, I know that that is 26. Is that 26? Yes, it is. So we get x is equal to 26. So this kind of setup, you would do the same thing over here, except we've got a little hint for you over here. I'm going to put a 1 underneath, and then you'll see that we're going to multiply by the fraction buster numbers, which would be what's in the denominators. Now this one is a little bit more tricky because we've got a y is equal to something, y is equal to something. And so since you know that y is equal to this and you know y is equal to this, you gotta set them equal to each other, make them equivalent. If you remember from class, that's called the equal values method. So we talked about how the equal values method is if you know something's equal to this, and that same something is equal to something else, just make them equal to each other. That's a lot of words, so I'm going to make it more evident by writing it out. By doing 7x plus 2 is equal to what's over here, 2x minus 10 and 5 tenths. Then we're going to go ahead and draw this line. We're going to notice that the x's can be taken out. we end up with 0 over here, 5x plus 2 is equal to negative 10.5. Then we're going to go ahead and subtract that 2. What we do to one side, do the other. Keep in mind when you subtract the 2, you want to make sure that it's 2.0, not 0 0.2. That's a common mistake. Then this goes by. We end up with 5x is equal to negative 12.5. Then we're going to go ahead and divide by 5 here. We want to get rid of the uh, x values. So then we get x is equal to 5 divided by negative 12.5 or 12 divided by 5 is going to be negative 2.5. And there we go. There's our answer for x. Now, once you find your x, you do need to find your y value. And how do you do that? Well, our y value is actually given here. y is equal to 7x plus 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to say y is equal to 7x plus 2. And if we know that x is equal to negative 2.5, that's what we're going to put. We're going to say 7 times negative 2.5 plus 2. We know 7 times negative 2.5, that's going to be, hmm, if you had 7 quarters, how much money would you have? 
you have a dollar seventy-five. But since the decimal was there, one place value, you got to put that one place value there, and we know it was a negative. If you don't want to do that, you can also write it into your calculator. We go 2.5 times 7, negative 17.5. Then we've got the plus 2. So the negative 17.5 means go back. 2 means going forward. So we end up with our y value being negative 15 and 5 tenths. So that's what y is equal to, negative 15.5. And then x is equal to negative 2.5. Those are our answers. You're going to need to do that same thing for this one. So equal values method is what you're going to use. You're going to set it up where we have the 32x plus 16 is going to be equal to the 80x plus 4. Then solve. OK, so number 5 is what we have next. We have the y is equal to this and y is equal to this. So what you're going to do is you're again going to use that equal values method where we make them equal to each other. So we're going to make x over 3 equal to 4 over 3 x minus 9. Now what's going to happen is we are going to eliminate those denominators. How do, you delimit, how do you eliminate them? By multiplying by them. So we're going to multiply by 3 here. What we do to 1, we do to all. We're going to multiply everything by 3. You're going to notice these cancel out. Get x. These cancel out. Get 4x. And then this one doesn't cancel out. So we're ending up with 27. Okay? Next thing we're going to do is we're going to solve for x. I like to make it so that x is always positive, um, but some people don't mind making it negative. So I'm going to make it so that x is positive by subtracting by the, the smaller amount. This is going to be 0. So you get 0 is equal to 4x minus x, which is 3x minus 27. Then we're going to go ahead and add by 27 to both sides. And we get 3x is equal to 27. And how do you get x alone? You divide by 3. And we get x is equal to 9. Now, after you know what x is, you're going to solve for y. y happens to be x over 3, which in this case, if x is 9, all we do is we substitute that x with 9, then divide it by 3. 9 divided by 3 is going to be 3. And there's your answer. So we know that our answer in this one was x is 9 and y is 3. So in example number 6, it's really important that you, again, use the equal values method because both of them are equal to y, where you've got x over 6 plus 1 fourth going to be equal to x minus 9 over 4, and then you're going to go ahead and multiply by that 6 and 4 and eliminate, and you should be able to solve the problems. If you need any help, let me know at office hours, and thanks for watching. See you guys next time.